expect more. This is Channel 6 News at 10. We begin tonight in West Texas, the community still grieving and leaning on one another after that horrific mass shooting. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Imani Payne. A gunman went on a shooting rampage in West Texas this weekend, killing seven people and wounding 25 others. Authorities provided more information about the attack in a press conference earlier today. Channel 6's Maria Aguilera was there and has the latest on the investigation. Maria. Today, authorities released new information as they continue to investigate the mass shooting here in Odessa and Midland. And as they process the crime scenes, we now know what unfolded just minutes before the attack. Seven people were killed and 25 others injured in two neighboring cities in West Texas after a gunman opened fire at random in Midland and Odessa. According to FBI, the gunman called 911 rambling just 15 minutes before he began shooting, then called again to identify himself as the shooter. They say the shooter displayed dangerous behavior leading up to the attack and that this could possibly be prevented. The most important characteristics where people can help us is this spiraling downward path that these individuals have where they they lose mental capacity. The FBI stresses the importance in reporting changes in people's behavior. Very few instances do people then reach out uh, to a mental health professional or a boss or a law enforcement to say, hey, this, this person is of concern. This is what I have seen and it has me very concerned. If we could do more of that, I, I, think, I, I think some of these we might be able to stop. From 15 initial crime scenes, authorities are now left to process just a few as they continue their investigation. There is still no clear motive to what led the gunmen to start the killing rampage on Labor Day weekend. As for the people, they are still working to recover from the tragic events that took place on Saturday. Reporting in Odessa, Maria Aguilera, Channel 6 News. Thank you, Maria. As Odessa and Midland continue to find ways to heal during this difficult time, Comfort Dogs have arrived in town to help those affected by the tragedy. Channel 6's Barry Roy brings us the story of man's best friend to the rescue. A tragedy like this is difficult to put into words. This is Janice Maroon with the Lutheran Church Charities Canine Comfort Dog Ministries. And she and her volunteers have brought six comfort dogs. You can't steal my purse there, babe. From all over Texas to help the communities of Odessa and Midland begin to heal. This one's quite different from others that we've been to in that there's no central one place that it occurred. It's very spread out. Yes, sir. I think they are. This is Robert Estevito. He sat and watched. He says these dogs do what they do for over 30 minutes. He says it's working. I saw a girl a little earlier. She was crying. Pretty powerful. Yeah. It was. The Comfort Dogs just completed a two-week deployment, as they call it, to help comfort and heal the victims, survivors, and first responders in El Paso. These dogs are trained to be calm and quiet. As communities and mourn and they're shattered, they Janice themselves. says these dogs have one job, and that's to present themselves to people who are sad or lonely, and to people, she says, who are feeling deep despair. To love them unconditionally, allow people to begin to process emotions. Sometimes it's laughter, sometimes it's tears. And this time, it's man's best friend to the rescue in the darkest times for a community. Take away from these dogs, the only thing they take away from them, they feel better. And Robert touched himself by the shootings last weekend. While he doesn't quite understand why it happened, he understands the dogs, he understands the moment they give. I love them. I've got three dogs of my own. And uh, I know how the dogs... They can make you feel good. They can. At least they're helping here anyway. For what I can see. In Odessa, Barry Roy, Channel 6 News. Thank you, Barry. For more information about the victims, you can head to our app or our website at kcentv.com. We will continue to bring you the latest details as they become available. Hurricane Dorian unleashed massive flooding across the Bahamas today. Several people have died and others are trapped by the high waters. The hurricane has been a slow moving monster for locals there and for people on the East Coast. Jamie Garula has the latest from Florida. 
Tonight, there's a death toll after Hurricane Dorian whipped through the Bahamas, then stalled over the islands for hours. We know that there are a number of people in Grand Bahama who are in serious distress, and we will provide relief and assistance as soon as possible. And now, more than 24 hours since making landfall, the mission is rescue and recovery. The initial reports from Abaco is that the devastation is unprecedented and extensive. In Miami, much needed donations being collected for the devastated islands. Meanwhile, the rest of Florida still on edge, waiting for Dorian to make a move. Florida's governor says dozens of medical facilities are moving patients to safer ground. Get out now while you have time, while there's fuel available, um, and you'll be safe on the roads. More than a million people ordered to evacuate from Florida to the Carolinas. Across the U.S., thousands of flights canceled and some airports are closed. All right, and airports in Fort Lauderdale and West Palm are both closed. Miami International remains open. However, Orlando will also close sometime overnight. So anybody with any sort of travel plans to Florida should definitely check with their airlines for any possible delays or cancellations. In Pompano Beach, Florida, Jamie Garola, NBC News. You can keep an eye on the track of that hurricane with the Channel 6 app. Be sure to tune in to Texas Today tomorrow morning starting at 430 to see the latest details. 31 people remain missing tonight after a dive boat fire in California broke out early this morning. Santa Barbara officials say crews found four more bodies on the ocean floor. This after four other victims were recovered earlier today. Five crew members were able to jump overboard. The Coast Guard said a May Day call came in alerting them to a vessel that was fully engulfed, which was carrying dive enthusiasts for a trip billed as a three day Labor Day excursion. This isn't a day that we wanted to wake up to for Labor Day, and it's a very tragic event. Um, and we will search uh, all the way through the night into the morning, but I think we all should be prepared um, to move into um, the, the worst outcome. State, local, and federal agencies say they are working to determine what caused that fire. Still to come, the Baylor Bears turn from a great performance to a great test. Nick Canizales explains the challenges UTSA will bring to Waco on Saturday. Plus, you've seen the photo, but have you heard the story? One local man's connection to Jim Lavelle, the man handcuffed to Lee Harvey Oswald. Stick with us. Welcome back. Tonight we remember Jim Lavelle, who died last week at 99 years old. Back in November 1963, he was handcuffed to JFK's killer, Lee Harvey Oswald, when he was shot by Jack Ruby. Video from November 1963 captures that moment. You see Oswald walk out with Lavelle, then you see Jack Ruby run up to the pair and shoot Oswald. Jim's nephew, Lurie, lives near Belton and says he would share this story often. Lori was in his first year of medical school when the shooting happened, and he didn't immediately see the TV. Lori says Jim actually asked to go a different direction when they were escorting Oswald because something just wasn't sitting right. And she said, when do you want to get off here? And he said, well, I, I have an uneasy feeling about something happening, and I'd rather get off here, and, and I'd, I'd like to go out a different way. I said, it was my uncle. <laughs> And uh, I was amazed, and then I really got serious about it because I realized that he almost got killed. According to the family, the funeral is set for Saturday. For more on this story, head over to KCENTV.com. Well, weather is coming up. Andy, are there any new updates on Dorian? Well, yeah, we're keeping an eye on this storm. It's the fourth named storm of the season. We're up at the door. In tonight's six more things to know, the Colleen Police Department is searching for a 66-year-old man suffering from medical conditions. Arminio Reyes was last seen in the Grasslands Drive area. He is 5'8 and weighs about 160 pounds. He was last seen wearing blue jeans and a blue and white striped shirt. Police believe he left in his vehicle, which is a gray Nissan Maxima. If you have any information, contact police. Last night, singer Khalid raised more than $500,000 for the victims of the El Paso mass shooting. Hundreds gathered for the event wearing special El Paso Strong t-shirts. Presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke was also in attendance. He introduced the singer on stage. All the money raised during the event will be donated to the El Paso Victims Relief Fund. 
Actor and comedian Kevin Hart suffered major back injuries after a car crash over the weekend. Officials say the driver of the car that Hart was riding passenger in lost control of the vehicle, causing it to crash through a fence and roll down an embankment. Authorities say the driver was not under the influence at the time. Hart may have to have surgery. One hiker is dead and several others were rescued in California. Officials say the 10 hikers split off when they got lost in the hills and ran out of water. The man who died was in his 60s. His identity has not yet been released. An investigation is underway. More Sears and Kmart stores are on the chopping block. Nearly 100 additional locations will close their doors by mid-December. The announcement comes just weeks after the two retailers' parent company announced that 26 stores would close in late October. Liquidation sales are expected to begin later this month. And the walk to end Alzheimer's is headed to Bell County. Anyone can participate in the three-mile walk, and every dollar donated will help those affected in the community. The walk is set for September 7th at 9.30 a.m. at the Confederate Park in Belton. Texas Today Morning anchors Heidi Alaga and Chris Rogers will MC the event. For details on how to donate or join the walk, visit our website. That's KCENTV.com. Now let's get a check of the weather. Andy. Money, it is hot. It's going to stay hot for us. And we don't see much in the way of any rain chances anywhere on the near horizon.